All right, welcome to part three, and this is the final part of the local storage shopping cart application. So we have our list of products that are being fetched and displayed here. We have our cart that's being drawn from local storage and displayed here. We can go into the dev tools. If you go to the application tab, and then you can find local storage and here's our local storage for the domain that we're currently on. There's the object and the elements here match the elements that we have here showing up in the cart. Okay, so how do we do this? Let's look at the sequence of events. Okay, so we looked at the cart last time, so we know the functionality that's inside there. Going back to DOM content loaded when the page first loads, three things that we're doing. We're getting the products, we're getting the contents of the cart, and then we're showing the cart. Inside the get products function, down here, get products, what we're doing is we are actually displaying them as well. So when we're finished, we're going to call the function show products. So, oh, actually, um, something I didn't use was I'm passing in a success and a failure um, function. This is something that you can do as well. So we got show products, error message being passed into success and failure. So we could, to make this a little bit more flexible for the future, if this is designed in a way that you can pass in the function that you want to call when the data comes back, this is the way to do it. So I passed in that function to success. Success is the function that's going to be called. And we can do the same thing here with error message being passed to failure. And then inside the catch, we just put that name like that. So it's a little cleaner, a little easier to read, and it gives us a little bit better reuse of this function. So our initial steps, get the products, show them, get the cart, show it. I'm using the products.json file that I've got up on GitHub. So I've got that link in the description and for the description in the last video as well. Um, this is a copy of that file. So we can see it is an array of objects. Every object has an ID, a title, description, image, and a price. This is the stuff that we want to write out as the cards. So in our interface, these six elements over here on the left, this is a card, this is a card, this is a card. And we're just going to write out the information inside there. And it's, it's just some repetitive um, JavaScript that we call once we get the data. Getting the data is really quite simple. Call fetch pass in the URL. I set a couple of options. I said I'm using get, which is the default, and I want to make sure that I'm using cores um, to make sure I can use the data. It doesn't get rejected. I'm calling JSON to convert the response that comes back into an actual JSON object because the response that comes back, what we're given is the contents of that file, which is really just a big string. So I want to take that take the contents of the file that came back, this one, and turn it into a JavaScript object. That's what this method does. It then passes it to our success function, which is show products. And the show products works a lot like the show cart. We can look at the two of them. So I have my global products variable. I'm taking the products that were just sent back from that JSON file, and I'm putting it inside there to save it for later. This gets used later on to check and see whether or not we've got matches. And that's the purpose of this one. In here, this is my local copy of products that I'm going to loop through. So my image path, same place I had the JSON file up here, I'm fetching the images from that same location. Product section, this is one of the handful of HTML tags that we have on the page. See, I skipped right by it. Inside main, Products cart, those are the two main sections. That's where all of this is being built. So the products is being built in here and the cart is being built inside here. So you'll see a lot of parallels between these two functions, the show products and show cart. There's gonna be a lot of parallels between these two functions. We do a for each loop. So we're looping through this array of products. The product variable will represent each one of these objects. So this whole file, this is our products variable, and then each one of these objects, this is product. 
and then the second time through the loop, this is product. The third time through the loop, this is product, and so on. So each one of them has the same variables. There's an ID, a title, the image, the price, and the description. We create a div, give it a class name so that the CSS will style it. Then we create an image, set its alt attribute, set its source, and then put the image inside the card. For the price, we create a paragraph. And then I use the international number formatting thing. This is another reason why uh, we can, can use Babel to convert this back to ES5, because this is something that's fairly new in the browsers, support for this. Um, we write out cost, which is from the product object, get the price. This command will convert this number, this numeric value, into a currency value with the currency character in front of it. This currency character. So that becomes my text content for the price paragraph. Give it the class price so the CSS applies to it and put it in the card. Repeat this for the title. Repeat it for the description. Create an element, set the text, add it to the card. Create an element, set the text, add it to the card. Create an element, and this is the button, give it a class, set the text, and there's one other thing that we're doing in here, right here, before we put it onto the page. We want to take the ID for the item. So each one of these items, bell, bullhorn, clock, cog, phone, and light bulb, all of these elements have IDs. So in this JSON file, they've all got these numeric IDs. I want to save that inside the button. So inside here, in this button, let's say I, let's go in here and inspect this. Right here, I'll bump this up a little larger for you to see. Okay, here's one. There's the button. There is a data ID set to 456. So this is a property that I made up. This is the number that came out of the JSON. So when the user clicks this button, the click event is going to contain a reference to this button. From that reference, we can get this number. And that's how I know which item I want to add to here. So if I click on this, there we are. Bullhorn has now been added. And it knew to add Bullhorn because the ID was inside the button. So that's very key to what we're doing here. The ID is inside there. And here's my click listener to call the function add item. Here's add item. You can see there's the click event. Event target, that is the button. Get the attribute data ID. Well, that was the one that we created right here. So I'm taking that number 456. I'm writing it out to the console. That's not required. It's just to see that it is happening. And then I call cart.add. And that number 456, that's what's being sent to that function. So if you remember from last time, cart add. Where's cart? Open it up, scroll down to add. So 456 was the number we passed in. We're looking to find 456. It wasn't there. So we jump over here. We go through the products array. This is that global one that we created when we got it, got it back from fetch. We're looping through all the products, looking for the one that matches on the ID. Once we have that, that's put into this variable right here, and we create our own object, getting the rest of the elements out of that products array, which came from the JSON. So back down here, so our cart.add, that worked. Then I'm calling show cart again. Now show cart, that's the one right here that mirrored the show products. We also called it here. I'm calling it multiple times. And the reason for that is when you add something to the cart, I want it displayed there. So the quickest and easiest way to do it is have a common function that automatically runs through all of the items. It clears out. Oh, this should be cart section. You can make that change in your code as well. 
find the cart, the section in the HTML with the ID cart, and we're setting its inner HTML to nothing. So delete the old version of the cart. I'm going to sort the cart. We can sort it on quantity, which is what it's doing right now. See, one, two, four, five. We could change this to sort by title. Apple banana bell bullhorn. If I add clock, it gets added at the end. If I add cog, that should be added at the bottom. Now I'll take, uh, let's see, if we add light bulb and phone, yep, they're always adding at the bottom, but I did it in alphabetical order. So let's delete cog. Okay, cog's gone. Now if I add it back, it should place it here because it's deleting all these items and placing it back in here because we're calling the sort. And there it is. Great, so that worked. So we had the cog, we're sorting it, and then we're doing a for each loop for everything in the cart. S is our temporary copy of the cart that has been sorted. If you go back up into the cart object, there's our sort function. Remember we could pass in a field to sort it on, and it returns the sorted version of the cart. So it's a copy of the cart, a shallow copy of the cart that we're looping through here. And then, same thing that we did to display the products. Create a div, give it a class name. That's the cart. Inside of it, create a heading, set the text, give it a class, put it in the cart. The cart item, which is the div. Create another div, give it a class, put it in the cart. That's the container for our controls. And then we have one for the plus sign, we have one for the minus sign, we have one for the quantity, and we've got one for the price. Those are the different parts. Now the different things here, when we were building the products, we had those buttons inside each one. Inside the span for the um, controls in the cart, the plus and minus, we're doing the same thing that we did before. We're creating an attribute called data ID. So we can take that number, that four, five, six, one, two, three, whatever the ID is, we're saving that inside this button, this span that we're creating. This is our button. When the person clicks it, we call increment. So that's the plus. Inside the minus, we do the same thing. We take the ID, we save it inside there. So inside the plus and the minus, there's the ID. If you click the plus, we call increment. You call, click the minus, we call decrement. So these two functions, increment and decrement, they're doing pretty much the same thing. Again, get the ID from the HTML, EV target, that's the span that was just clicked, call cart increase. Here, span nth child two. That, if we scroll back up here, here it is, this one. So the first one is the plus, the second one is the quantity, the third one is the minus. So one, two, three, nth child one, nth child two, nth child three. That's the quantity. So that's the quantity field. We find the one that was clicked. If it exists, we set the text inside the quantity to the new updated quantity that we just found in the cart. So item gives us back the whole object from the cart. We want to know what the quantity is. So item.quantity. That's what we write out. So when you increase it, you have to update the display as well. If it doesn't exist, we're removing the child. For the decrement, now, this really should never happen. You shouldn't be clicking plus on something that doesn't exist. This is just there for protection for us. Decrement, same code. Find the ID, call reduce instead of increase, pass it the ID, the number's gonna change. We find it, get the quantity, as long as it exists, or 
long as it exists, update the quantity. Otherwise, remove child. And there we go. That is, I think, everything. Yes, that is all of our functions. Now, I do have a couple of things inside of here for you guys to work on. If I jump into application here, you can see here's our cart with all these items inside of it. And I am doing checks to see when the quantity gets down to zero in the cart. So, here, let's close that off. There we go. So if I'm on one and I hit minus, I'm going down to zero. If I'm going up, that's fine. But if I go minus, minus, it removes the element when it gets to zero. Something that's not being done, something I intentionally left out here, is if you're clicking on the plus, you may have noticed these prices never change. So right now, banana, 11, says it's $1.40. You refresh the page, 385 is actually the price. Because there's a an item quantity times the quantity gives you this price, but I'm not updating it yet. So that is your challenge right now. For you guys, what I want you to do is two things. One, get a mechanism in here, a plus, a minus, something, some sort of um, call to action inside of here, a button that the user can click to remove the whole thing. So say, for example, there were 30 bananas in here, 31 bananas. I don't want to have to click minus 31 times just to get rid of this. I want to have a, a delete button to get rid of all the bananas all at once with one single click. This is better user experience. So that's your first challenge. And the second one is, as we were discussing, to highlight this, or not highlight this, sorry, but to update this. When you change the quantity, up or down, every time you change the quantity, update this as well. We're updating the quantity, but we need to update the price as well. So those are your two challenges to implement for this final step. And once you have that, that's it. You have kind of a functional shopping cart. We haven't done anything with users logging in. We haven't done anything to upload the cart, but really that's just taking that cart, converting it to a string, and then passing it to a server. It's the server-side programming that processes the orders that you're going to place. But this is a quick and easy client-side implementation of a shopping cart. So I hope you find that useful. I hope that helps you get started in developing things like this on your own. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you found this series useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.